Let's have a look at natural gas. So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. So, uh, of course, uh, do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So, natural gas futures. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a very interesting commodity because, it, as you can see here in the long-term chart, it goes on big rallies and also big pullbacks. So it works really well in a market neutral uh, portfolio. And the reason why this one is especially interesting now is due to this. Let me draw that in like that. So the purple is the um, 20 week moving average resistance resistance. But you see that it's not been too bad as a place to consider some buying. Uh, it, it has a history of offering support. When we go here to the dailies, you see the blue 100 day moving average plays the same role. Uh, we have tested it um, three times now. I think this one is too interesting. Uh, so overall, it looks technically, you know, pretty, pretty bullish. We have a solid level. Uh, looking at these other indicators, so uh, looking at MACD, weekly might be flirting with the sell signal. RSI just sort of stuck in the middle on the dailies. Uh, RSI, it's, you know, on a low, on the lower end of the spectrum, vis-a-vis -vis the more recent uh, trading range. Accumulation distribution is still weak, so there's no, like, you know, beyond that support level, we don't have that much to hang our hat on. Uh, let's look at the news here. Yeah. Okay, so um, it is also very low, as you can see. The the, the net gas prices are not like uh, anywhere close to all-time highs. Uh, hence, there's also a bit of a value case to be made here. Okay, so let's go back to my notes. So net gas. So in this case, I will say that we have 100 DMA support that is like the primary event i will give the bulls an eight of course that eight is contingent on that support level but as long as it holds this is just a very nice and clean support level when it comes to like a stop loss level we have seen if we measure this time here so in that case you went down yeah 3.7 percent so as far as the stop loss level from the current level, yeah, if you accept like a 3.7%, that's something, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, because you, you don't want to have the stop loss exactly at the 100 day moving average because it's, it's dipped a bit below uh, yesterday. You can see that it went, yeah, a bit more than a percent below that support level. But yeah, it looks, it's just too interesting. So let's look at the seasonality. So to the left here, the seasonality is not that bullish yet. It gets really bullish here in early December, which isn't that far off. Uh, looking here at the chart to the right, you see that when we look at the overall performance for the months. So we are currently in November, 18% loss so far. So this is literally the worst November in this entire table. That is, you know, contrarian bullish. Uh, when we look here at uh, December, December is definitively not a bullish month, though, for nat gas. The context is, however, different, given that we are at a historically fairly low level. But yeah, December could be a problematic month. Um, if you look at some of the really bad uh, Novembers, um, before us, if you look here at 2021, then a 10% loss for December, but then a big win in January. Uh, if you look here at um, 2019, a tiny loss for December, and then also a loss for January. If we look here at um, 2007, loss and then a win for December and January. So we currently have the worst November. So, so the context um, when it comes to what could happen in December, it, it's, it's potentially interesting. But overall, 
the seasonality is not li really bullish. Yes, I do think I could give the bears. Yeah, I think it, this actually is a minus minus four for the bears. It's it's there are issues in the seasonality, the, but the context is, however, that we are um, at a very low price historically. So when we, it comes to the fundamentals, in that case, you could certainly are, or argue that yes, we are at a very low level. Uh, and when I look at some other tools I have access to, it also corroborates the idea that Netcast is at a low level. So there's value here, so around the 5 here on the, oops, not a minus 5, but a, you know, a bull 5, like that, on the fundamentals. So let's now go to relative uh, performance. So let's get ng, ng. And we will compare it against, um, yeah, let's to take the UNG. So the UNG is the Netcast um, ETF. And you also have the boil, which is if you are feeling a bit uh, bullish. Uh, there also is like a bearish leveraged one, but in this context, it doesn't make uh, that much sense. So long term, there is a minus 12% correlation with S&P 500. Uh, you see here that the correlation, it does seem actually to go a bit in cycles. So that has, that is actually pretty interesting. The cycles do have some stability and there's a tendency for uh, the correlation to actually become even more negative. It usually peaks around minus five-ish uh, negative correlation. Uh, so that makes it even more interesting uh, in uh, in like a balanced market neutral portfolio. And looking long term, we have 99% correlation with UNG. So UNG is not like a terrible t way to trade net gas on the bullish side. Oops, also the weekly is on the boil 92%, which is fairly positive as well. Looking at daily data points, shorter term, yeah, 28% correlation with S&P 500. In this case, it's positive, but there also is a decline here in the correlation. So there is this cyclicality there as well on the dailies. UNG 44% positive correlation, which is definitely not, not high. And there's a 12% correlation with the boil. It has been much higher in the past. So it's, it's quite recently, well, not that recent, but you see that the correlation just collapsed uh, here in August, September. So there's been, there recently been issues with the uh, boil, especially. Okay. I will not replay. Okay. Yeah. So let's, um, well, yeah, let's compare them a bit against each other there. Yeah. So let's compare UNG and NG. The UNG is the ETF. Yeah, so the net gas, uh, the future, it has outperformed the ETF because there is some tracking error. Um, you do see that it's definitely on the higher end of the spectrum uh, looking at the RSI, but given the way these ETFs, they struggle a bit with tracking uh, the commodity, it doesn't make as much sense to look at the RSI as it does in other cases. Um, we do have a see that in previous periods, let me draw that in. If you look at this period here, you see that uh, we did go through some, you know, multiple months with a relatively stable relationship between these two. So that is, it is definitively a possibility. But yeah, there's just issues uh, with the, these kinds of products. Um, yeah, so let's look a bit here at UNG. So here are the weeklies. So, um, the UNG recently made, um, a new low. So that's a bit of an issue. Um, so compare this against the NG, which is the futures. Relatively different uh, chart. If we look here at FOIL. Yeah, look here at the dailies. You also see that it um, 
also recently made a new all-time low. So when it comes to this trade, it definitively is a trade with a big uh, T. Especially if you want to get into the UNG or the boil. Um, it's very short term, so it's based on this 100 day moving average. Um, the thing is that in nat gas, you know, the moves can come pretty big. So just to get up here, it would be 12%. If you look here at Boyle and some of the previous uh, rallies, like this rally here as an example, all of a sudden you get, you know, 40%. So the gains, they do come pretty quick. So when it comes to relative performance, um, so I specifically like compared it against um, the alternative ways to trade that gas. You could of course compare it to other commodities, but the thing is that net gas is like um, it's one of a tiny hand handful of different uh, energy commodities. So it doesn't make as much sense to compare them against each other as with other things. So in this case, I will leave the, net, the relative performance um, a blank. Uh, so we do end up with uh, a three in favor of the bulls. So we are at 100 daily moving average uh, support. And that is basically the trade we have here. It's a uh, fairly short ter uh, term, uh, especially if you want to use UNG or boil. Um, and that is especially due to the recent breakdown in the correlation with net gas. Um, there are some stocks, of course, that, uh, you know, in the energy business that have significant exposure to natural gas, which you could look into if you feel uh, bullish on net gas. I did ask GPT a bit about this, and it did offer some pretty interesting suggestions, especially Ontario Resources. Uh, so um, I looked into that one here. Uh, so what I did find is that uh, the correlation between Ontario Resources, long short term it is 75% positive, long term it is 70% positive, which isn't too shabby. So. Ontario Resources, ticker AR on the NICE. Uh, that is an interesting way to, to get the exposure to net gas. Uh, and, and that is a pretty pretty decent correlation, frankly, given that this is a stock. So, yes. If you are more longer term, uh, then um, and you don't want to get into the actual futures, then, uh, yeah, AR is very interesting indeed.